Hello, good evening. I'm Gabby Logan and I'm partnering with American Express this evening to see how we can all pass on our passion for travel to our little ones. And to help me do that, two people who know a lot about it, travel presenter and writer Simon Reeve and Emily Leary, who is a blogger, uh, but you're also uh, really involved in a lot of family issues, aren't you, when you blog? And travel yeah. is particularly something that you're uh, fond of and have lots of tips on. So I'm dying to get stuck into those. And we want to hear from you as well. So if you've got any tips or anecdotes, we're going to dip into those as well if you send them to us over the next next 20 minutes or so. We are live here on Facebook Live. And first of all, I'm going to ask you, Emily, that age-old kind of dilemma that parents at a certain age when your kids are kind of getting a little bit of, you know, an opinion on things. <laughs> they want to do something, you want to do something different. How do you reconcile that when it comes to travel? Yes, so kids want to be go, 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 go. Parents would love a lie down by the pool is the general thing. But yes, certainly building in things that the kids are going to want to do is quite key, making a little bit of planning beforehand. And certainly, if you fancy a of a risk which is what we did for our last holiday letting the kids design the whole itinerary the whole trip the whole trip so we did five Risky. days <laughs> yeah in the in um, Sherwood Forest and they chose all of the activities so I would have chosen very gentle things a bit of pottery they had us <laughs> climbing in the trees swinging on ropes climbing walls all sorts of things I really enjoyed it, so it pushed kind of what I would have assumed was a kind of sensible family holiday. Do you think it made them feel a bit more responsible that they had to, you know, not moan about things when they got tired because they decided the mm. agenda? Yes, they absolutely loved it and they were really serious about it as well. Kind of like, which ones have we done? Which ones have we ticked off? And they wanted to achieve lots of things to be able to go back to school and tell their friends all about all the things that they'd tried. That's quite a risky strategy. Yeah, I think he's brave. I think he's brilliant as well. It's a bit bonkers, but that's, that's the, the, all of those are good. Good, surely. Um, it, really interesting because I think absolutely talking with your children and discussing it with them at the very least about what you're going to do, chatting it through, where you're going to go, maybe even when you're going to go sounds like an excellent idea. One thing we do is we try and set some challenges when we're going to go away as well. So it can be something simple. It can be we're going to try a new dish that night or we're going to walk that up to the top of that hill that, that, on that day. You know, you set a little target or a challenge in advance and that sort of gets people, oh yeah, yeah. You rise to that challenge and you complete it, you achieve it and it becomes more memorable as a result. So getting them excited in advance I think is, has got to be very helpful. And if you're not going to, if you're not going to hand the reins over to them, which many people might not be willing to do. At least discuss it and have a chat about it in advance. And that way, I think it's a little bit like almost smelling the cooking, frankly. You smell the meal when it's on the stove. Mm, children get to think about it. They get to relish the idea in advance. Well, it won't surprise you then because of those tips that two thirds of the people that we asked said that they let their kids come in with the whole decision making. They consult them about where they're going. And that didn't surprise me either because I know those holidays where you, you kind of throw them into something and you haven't given them any warning. They don't go as well, do they? They, they have to have a good time for you to have a good time. It's judging your children as well, I suppose, and knowing what, what, what do you need and what do they want and what do they need. Do they need a bit of inspiring? Do they need a bit of encouragement? Do they need to be pushed and forced? Sometimes that works as well. A bit of cajoling, maybe even a bit of gentle blackmail. <laughs> we are live on Facebook Live, so please send in your tips as well. We're going to be consulting those in a moment. So if one of the, the factors of a successful holiday is getting the kids involved, what are the other key ingredients, Simon? Goodness, for me, I mean, everybody's different, of course, but one of the big things for me is, is pushing us as a little family and my son and me and my wife, pushing us a little bit out of our, our comfort zones. And I think it can be very, you know, very, very pleasant to relax by the pool. It's so nice there. Oh, the sunshine, I feel like I'm dozing off. But really, that's not where the best memories are often. I think the best memories come from actually doing things together, building up that sort of store of memories and shared experiences. I, I get to travel for work. I'm very lucky to do that. But it's always a sadness for me that when I'm on these amazing trips abroad, I haven't got my son with me to share it with. So when I'm on a family holiday, a big thing is doing things that are interesting, doing things that are memorable, going a little bit further perhaps, trying some weird, strange, crazy local food that's gonna give us some memories, but doing it with my lad and banking some family memories. Absolutely, and Emily? 
Yeah, actually, um, one of the things that, again, that was completely new to us is we gave the cameras and one of those strap-on video cameras to the kids and they documented the holiday, so we put our phones away <laughs> and they took it so seriously. So we, um, we had the Whippersnapper activity book, um, which is brilliant. It's got kind of lots of different challenges for photography and teaches you kind of how to hold the camera. And they absolutely <coughs> loved it and just everything we walked past, kind of we were in the forest. So rather than just taking the path to the next activity, they were kind of going off path and kind of looking for animals to photograph and digging under the leaves and things that they wouldn't have done otherwise so it kind of pushed them out of their comfort zone it was so you brilliant got, you got them to plan it you got them to photograph it as soon as they start paying for it you are properly away aren't that's you? it yeah i don't <laughs> do my job anymore but it's those those special ingredients that make it so good you, at first you know and it's all a bit of a voyage of discovery isn't it when mm. you we take you babies away for the very first time and you don't really know because you're going from being a single person or a, just a couple and you've added mm. this whole new ingredient in to the mix and then you start to get a bit more confident, don't you, about where you go and, and you start not to worry too much about bedtimes and all those <laughs> things. Yes, and you learn things like making the whole holiday a holiday. So from the minute mm. that you leave the front door, then totally you know, agree, yeah. the journey is mm. exciting. Heading to the airport is exciting. What you do at the airport is exciting. Mike hasn't managed to persuade me that um, there's a tradition that they're allowed to buy a certain brand of mint. Uh, I don't normally buy them sweets, but they because they're mints, they think that that's okay. That's and somehow it's, acceptable. It's a holiday right? thing. It's, as soon as we get to the airport on holiday, they go and buy if these particular mints. You can't break mints. the rules when you're going on holiday, <laughs> then when on earth can you? I, I totally, it's really good that you say that, I think, because I totally agree. The journey should be part of the experience, part of the holiday. You know, people take flying on a plane often for granted now, mm. don't they? But, you know, when I was, when I was it's young... Still exotic. I, it's still yeah. exotic. It's an thing. I didn't get on a plane until I started working. And, and we have to sort of rekindle that, the excitement of that experience, I think. We have to inspire our children. Not just by saying to them, as I must admit I have done to my lad, I didn't get to do this when I was, when I was your <laughs> oh, age, sunshine. Yeah. But really just in, exciting them about the whole experience. So we're there to push, cajole, encourage, inspire, all of these things. Well, it sounds like your children are doing it for you by now. I think that's the thing, you pass your passions on, but then they reignite those passions in you. So you start enjoying things that you haven't yeah, done for you. Well, it's really lovely. It's when you surprise them on holiday because they, they do something they think is really daring and they say, you won't do it, and then you do it with them. Whether it's just jumping off a really high diving board or doing something that they don't expect, you put yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah, mum and dad can manage this. I like that. Uh, we've got some really good... Uh, contributions coming in here from uh, our viewers. Uh, Oma Fitima says, uh, in the car, window stickers and party bags with little goodies are always uh, an excellent mm -hmm. idea. In the aeroplanes, uh, party bags with goodies and audio books. Very well prepared. Very yeah. well prepared. Nice, yeah. Heather Marshall says, lots of little wrapped toys and let them open one every half an hour. Half an hour? That's every half an hour. possibly a little bit too <laughs> generous. But... On a flight to Australia, that's going to be very expensive. Uh, Heather We've Carpenter... got some extra baggage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heather Carpenter says, uh, good tip though, thank you for that. And uh, Heather Carpenter says, individual backpacks with lots of time filling things. Some to test their minds, some just for fun, and some mm. to eat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you don't yeah, want yes. to get caught short on the yeah, food. Planning and preparation is, yeah. is important. I mean, I'm all for spontaneity, but I think that's probably the thing that's gone out of the window more than anything since the arrival of a child. Mm. You, you have to have some preparation, we wouldn't say. Audiobooks are a great idea. Mm. I mean, you've got so many available for free online now to take with you, and it still lets the, the mind is still free to look around and take it all in and hear a story at the same time on a long journey or something. Love them. Yeah, I think what I've learned also as well about uh, the destination when we get there is I might want to visit four or five ancient relics in one day, but they, mm. they will just do one. And that's, you know, <laughs> we, can, we can compromise. It is com things. compromise is yeah. the absolute key. Yes. Yeah. And building in some time to just let them run free. So, you know, maybe a, a kind of high up in Greece near the ruins isn't yeah. the best place no, to let them no. run free. So <laughs> even if it's a playground, just somewhere where they can feel a bit free and not being told what we're going to do next. I'm going to say old ruins in Greece. I think that's a great place for children to run. <laughs> A <laughs> little bit of risk, a little bit of jeopardy. Children love that. But it could end up being very expensive. It's a UNESCO <laughs> site or something. Uh, we are live, of course, on Facebook Live, so please do get your comments and your suggestions in, and we'll uh, we'll try to read those out. Um, so, given that we've just acknowledged all the special things about holidays and the memories that they can create, and the wonderful times that we're hoping our kids will remember, mm. what are your favourite memories, or at least one memory, Simon? Me, okay. Um, I think it's a lovely question, actually, because that's one of the, the wonderful things about holidays is you start thinking about them and you have the sort of lovely warm feelings of contentment and love that they evoke. So what I would, I would have to pick 
being on holiday with my family when I was a lad, we went year after year to the south coast, to Studland Bay, which is still incredibly beautiful, an incredibly beautiful beach. I think we might, we've got a picture. This is, actually isn't Studland Bay, but that's me on the right and my absolutely <laughs> beloved younger brother, James. James there. has got a cheeky face. Is he, he still like that? I don't know if he still has. He's pretty grown up now, but in, in my head, he still had. He used to eat sand when we were a kid on the beach, which I still find amusing today. Anyway, so that's us on the beach, not at Studland, but somewhere else in the south. So that, goodness me, that's got such wonderful, strong memories for me. We used to go to the beach, we used to dig holes, we used to swim in the sea. It rained sometimes, it didn't matter, we had an amazing time. I suppose the only thing that I, or what I would maybe criticise slightly, is that we didn't really set special challenges when we were there. We didn't do special things really. We went to the beach and that was wonderful. We, we fed our imaginations, there's a lot to be said for that. But I'm sort of keen for us to be pushed a little bit as well. So I try and say, okay, we're gonna do a walk today. Today we're gonna to walk to those rocks over there, we're gonna climb those rocks and we're gonna achieve something. And I think those are useful markers on a I holiday. I just suggest people do their homework on that because we were on a fantastic holiday in Pembrokeshire in Wales mm. and we went for a bike ride one day. I said, we're gonna go around this reservoir. I thought it was about four miles. Turned out it was twelve, um, and um, I was. I Sorry was not, to laugh. Yeah, it was. It was raining. Who was doing the map reading was, there? Um, well, I just looked at it and thought that looks about four miles, um, and the kids weren't very happy. But at the end of it, we still yeah. talk about it, and it ended up becoming the boys against the girls, and the girls won. And well, so, you turned it into a challenge. Yes, yes and that makes it very yeah. memorable as yeah. a result. Yeah. I think, you know, when people get stuck or as a puncture or something, that becomes very, very memorable. That's something that kids love and remember as well. What, what are your memories or your favourite memories of recent holidays? Then? So, a little while ago, we went to Cyprus as a family. It was the first time that we'd rented a car, so we could kind of go beyond resorts yeah. and kind <laughs> of <Out the> gates. <laughs> explore a bit further. So we got the kind of the classic map of Cyprus, and it's not that big. Yeah. So we kind of circled everything that we might want to head in that general direction, and then each day we just headed out on a kind of semi-planned adventure. And actually, if you think about it, we were ticking things off, so there was oh. kind of a challenge element of can we go off in every direction. And you were exploring that. Yeah. yeah, and they loved it. And, you know, we didn't know what to expect. So we were at the zoo one day, we were at a completely different beach the next mm. day. It was lovely. That's, that's, little girl. that's my little girl. She was trying to Aww. skim stones on a very still sea. It was lovely. Oh, it makes me want to go back to Cyprus. I went there a few years ago. It's lovely, yeah. isn't it, Cyprus? A very good place for a family holiday. <laughs> um, I uh, personally had um, a fantastic holiday last year in South Africa with the kids. They're lucky enough to have been a couple of times because I think South Africa is somewhere that, first of all, the Rand makes it a very reasonable holiday when you get there, but it's also got so many different mm. facets. And my kids love animals, and we had the most incredible time with safari. But then we went down to Cape Town, and the sea is so magnificent. The beaches are incredible. Oh, there they are, my little surf dudes. Great That's the shot. first time they got body That's boards. So cool. And you know what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was absolutely freezing that sea. And I could hardly <laughs> go into it up to my knees. And they were in there for hours because what I've also noticed about kids is if they're having a good time, they don't notice the weather yeah. anymore. Somehow <laughs> it creates a force field, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it could be so cold, but as long as they're having fun, that's they fine. don't go blue. No, they. <laughs> well, they did go a little bit blue, but that's that's fine. I just warmed them up. Afterwards. Run up and down the beach for two minutes, and they're fine afterwards. <laughs> but that's the other thing as well. When they're being active like that, you know, you get such good sleeps, and every parent wants good yeah. sleep on holiday. Yeah. So that that also helps, doesn't it, keeping them active? Um, okay. Well, uh, before we finish tonight, uh, with all the talk of this travel, it's making me a little bit of wanderlust coming on. So where are you heading to next with your kids? I am taking the kids to south of France. We know where we're staying, but apart from that, we haven't made any plans yet, so I'm open to suggestions from the experts. From the, okay. <laughs> um, goodness, well, we're staying quite close to home for our next family mini adventure. So we're going to, um, back to Dorset, actually. It's a sort of, um, uh, re almost a reunion, family holiday reunion. My little clan, my brother's family, my mum, we're going to get together in Dorset, go to Studland Bay again, just as we did when we were children. Now we're taking our children there. I love the continuity of that. What, should, for, Emily, what should Emily do in the south of France, though? You know that area I think pretty well, do you? Well, she knows, I think she knows. I think you've got to get out, get along the coastline and explore. It's very easy to get trapped in places in, in the south of France. Well, I'm going to be trying to impress you now, so I'll be 
sweet and we've been to 17 places. Yeah, we'll set some <laughs> targets. Go and eat some crazy French posh food. Get them to try, go to a posh restaurant as well as cafe. So you give them a, experiences at either end of the scale, I think, is something that. I'm really keen to do. And to, to behave almost appropriately when they're in each one, because I think that's quite, personally, my view, mm. it's quite good for kids to know, okay, now we're in a posh place, now we don't put our feet on the table or do little, <laughs> or start singing. Where, where are these restaurants where your kids put their karaoke. feet on the table? <laughs> <laughs> well, my lad is sometimes standing on the table. Sit down, sit down. But for other places, I'm going to have a couple of suggestions as well. I'm, I really love Greece for family holidays. Mm. I think it is an extraordinary place to visit. Obviously, it's not at the other side of the planet. It's just at the end of the Med. One of the reasons it's got great temperature all year round almost of course but the, the Greeks really love children there's never a point there I don't think where you feel oh maybe my children should be a bit quieter here no the, the Greeks absolutely adore them so we go to somewhere called Simi which is just off roads which I would really recommend a bit further because I have been very fortunate in life I've been to some extraordinary places around the world now I'm really keen on pushing people to go and explore more of our planet because it is such a safe and welcoming world I'm going to say go to Madagascar Wow. Take your children to Madagascar because it is like going to another planet. It, it is... might just be my favourite children's film. I've only watched it 13 times. <laughs> On that basis. Is it just like the film? It's, just like, it's nothing like the film. <laughs> Look, it's better than animals. the film. You promised talking you animals. You might almost. It's the sort of place, if there was anywhere you could find talking animals, it would be Madagascar. <laughs> but the point about it is I think it's very different, very extraordinary. You will see sights and eat food that is wild and wonderful. And Who as a result... Who goes there, Simon? Who not would many. Into. I think not, not enough people go to places like that because I think people think you've got to be really adventurous mm. to go there. And yeah, you've got to maybe be a little bit more, uh, you know, you've got to go a bit further than the package trip, mm. I think, with that. But I think people who go there know that what's amazing about living now and travelling now is the ability we've got to rack up incredible experiences. Mm. And somewhere like Madagascar, it offers those up in bucket or shed loads. I'm frankly. kind of all for, my kids are 11 now, I've got twins, and I'm mm. now kind of getting to the stage of travel where... I just want to go to really extraordinary places. And mm. if it means we only have one holiday a year, I'm, so we're going to Japan next for our holiday. Wow. <laughs> it's our first holiday for a year, and uh, they didn't have a summer holiday last year. So it is quite extraordinary. And I think Madagascar might be next on the list. And of course, the kids would occasionally just like a week in Spain. But no, I say, <laughs> let's, let's push the boundaries a bit, because there's so many yeah. places to explore, aren't there? So. And that kind of, those kind of exciting places, they're going to be exciting long before you set off. So there's the researching yeah. it and the learning yeah. about that so place. True. Kids can get so excited. Yeah, I'm making my kids learn Japanese. I'm only joking. I'm <laughs> um, <laughs> you can have to speak it fluently before we get on the plane. Yeah, that's an ask, isn't it? I've just got a couple of questions coming. Well, quite a few actually have come in, but we'll try and do a few before we finish. Michael Scott says, how do you keep kids from being bored on planes? Any tips on that? Films, That's what those screens are yeah. for. Yeah. Films, it's, it's the time when you kind of can't police the film, can you? You just, well, you can police what they watch, but you, they have to just, They get a lot of screen, get a lot of screen time, time on the flight, time, But also, my kids have got two little, you know, those little plastic suitcases, yes. and they'll pack their own mm. so that they, they can choose the books that they want to have, the games and things within reason, nothing so well, noisy that everyone my daughter do that. She packed um, the band that you put on in hospital when you're born, uh, a collection Whoa. of quartz crystals, and um, all of her girl guide, my brownie outfits. I was like, that, that's an interesting on if that's what uh, yeah. she wants. We, we <laughs> Did it work? Quite quickly, yeah. Erin <laughs> uh, Tanner says, any tips for taking two toddlers on a 10 hour flight? Erin, I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, yeah. That's any brave. tips? It's, yeah. it's brave. I've been on planes where there's lots of parents who, have, who are doing that. And it de just depends on your willingness and abilities, really, doesn't it? You know, I don't think people should think that as soon as they've got these small creatures, they can no longer leave the house. People, yeah. when they're small, they're portable. Mm. You know, I think, you know, my, my lad's at school now, and, and the big shock that you have as a parent, I, in my, obviously there's birth, and, that's, and there's when the state takes them away from you to educate them <laughs> at four. Between zero and four is quite a good age yeah. to, to be taking children I think away. also, as a, as a mum travelling, I, I think when somebody's with small kids on the plane, as long as they're doing their best to interact with them, I don't yeah. care how noisy they are. Yeah. If you're ignoring your children, that's a yes. different thing. But if kids are going to be, you know, a little bit noisy... You've got have some stamina yeah. and you've got to love them mm. but that's that's almost a given anyway because yeah. you're keen to get I tell you my big it. tip if you're traveling with toddlers <laughs> don't indulge in the rosé on the plane or the champagne because that doesn't that's go true. that that's doesn't true. go if they offer you a drink say yeah. no just resist I must have a level head I'm basically driving yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah treat it like you're driving um, and one more we've just got time for one more um, oh this is a, actually a really good one uh, Masson Martin says I'm looking to go on a quick sunny break uh, without breaking the bank help 
there's never been a better time to travel. The, the bargains that are available there where, are extraordinary. Where, where should you go then? I'm, I'm gonna, we've already talked about France, mm -hmm. Greece. What do you want? You want heat? You want a, a Norway for the for the scenery, for the mountains? Look online for goodness sake, but do it and do it now because life is so short and travel is such a wonderful thing to do. And if you're brave, you can have the budget, you can have the dates and then you can wait for that bargain. You'd, if you know yeah. when you're yeah, going. If you're yeah. young enough, they're yeah. not, as you say, being educated by the state. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for all those tips and, uh, and for coming along tonight, Simon and Emily. We hope we've inspired you as well to share your passion for travel with your kids. And if you go to the Amex Family Travel Hub, you can find so many more tips and also, of course, at Emily was talking a little bit earlier on as well uh, about the audio book and uh, the adventure book rather in there and there's so much there audio books what you were talking about of course Simon <laughs> but the uh, adventure book is there and you can go and have a look at the tips there so uh, plenty for you to get your teeth into I hope if you are going away you've been inspired and you can uh, have a fantastic trip wherever you're going with your kids thank you so much good night